This week, libraries across the country are celebrating National Library Week. And here at New Mexico in Focus, we wanted to hear how local libraries are helping meet some of the greatest educational challenges in our state, including low test scores among students and adults who don't have the skills they need to succeed in the workplace. Our producer, Sarah Gustava, sat down with two leaders from the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Library. I'm joined at the table today by Dean Smith, Library Director for the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Library. Thank you. And Deborah Hasse, Youth Services Manager. Happy to be here. Great. Dean, many of us, many public television viewers grew up going to the library, myself included, uh, either a local library or a school library. What are some of the things that are different about libraries today, especially here in Albuquerque? Well, we're constantly changing and expanding our services to meet the needs of customers because we've got a lot of digital materials that you know we didn't have when we were growing up. We've got ebooks, we've got books on, on tape, on digital that you can download. We've got them on a chip that you can borrow and, and you know take out jogging or vacuuming, whatever you want to do. We've also expanded and we've got things, you know, gadgets we call them, things like cake pans, um, kilowatt power meters to tell how much electricity your fridge and your TV use, and um, lots of gadgets that can be borrowed. We've got some e-readers that you can sample and take with you. If you want to see what it's like to have an e-reader before you bar buy one, you can borrow one from us. What are some of the services that the library provides that people might not know about? I'm thinking especially of folks looking for jobs or people who need to get new skills. It's an important issue here in New Mexico. Absolutely. We work with Talent Albuquerque, which is a, a group that is looking at um, testing people in a university setting. And then they can come and work in the libraries on our computers on building up the skills that they might need. These might be people that you know didn't ter do terribly well in college or, or high school school, maybe they didn't even get their GED. Um, we've also got you know, great online um, programs to help people. We've got tutoring, which is for all ages from you know, elementary through college. We've got um, also along with that, we've got some career coaching. So you know, if you're working on your resume and your interviewing skills aren't so good, you can go online and, and sign up and get some career coaching. Deborah, let's go the opposite direction. The library also has services for young children, for parents of young children, helping them get their children ready to read and ready for school. Why are, there, are the libraries hosting baby showers? Community baby showers are something we've been doing for the past couple of years because we recognize that it's not just important to get children ready for life to succeed. We want to get their parents ready to help them make those steps to succeed. And so community baby showers are a way to connect new and expecting parents with uh, the services, uh, the agencies, the businesses that might have something for them um, so that they can you know, make the steps that they need. So whether it's home visiting or connecting with a pediatrician or a birthing service, you know, we cover the gamut from you know, pretty much soup to nuts about you know, getting ready for having a baby and raising a child. So it's a great connection. We talk here on New Mexico in Focus and also on another program here on PBS, um, Public Square, about the well-being of our children in New Mexico. We have a high poverty rate in the state, lots of children and families that really are, are needing a lot to overcome. How are the libraries part of that, of addressing those persistent issues that we have in the state? I think one of the things that we are trying to address is the fact that parents have the power within them to actually reach out and make um, the steps to bridge that gap between what's going on um, between doing nothing and what the kids are learning in school. Waiting until a child is in kindergarten is really too late to start teaching them what they need to know about things like early literacy, uh, the skills that they need to know to get ready to learn how to read because as we know reading is sort of the the cornerstone of learning and being successful in school you know you can't read you really can't do anything else so we want to empower our parents that they can help they can reach out and they can do things with their children simple things not educational jargon but simple things that they can do together things like talking singing reading writing and playing just those connections, you know, can just foster a relationship, not just with the parent and the child, but with the child and literacy. So we want to make those connections, and we do that with our story times that we host at our libraries. What happens at story times? Well, it's um, a lot of fun. Um, first and foremost, um, the, our library staff uh, read stories, they play games, they sing songs, and they. Uh, 
kind of give the parents the you can do this kind of kind of spiel that they can you know go home and they can read stories together with their children it doesn't have to be um, something that just the librarians do or just teachers know how to do it's it's something that they can do and that's just what the driving message that we just want to repeat over and over that yes parents you can do this we'll give you the skills to show you how Dean, some of those parents may have struggled in school, may be struggling a little bit with their own reading skills and literacy skills. Why is literacy important for addressing poverty here in New Mexico? Well, you know, it, study after study shows that, you know, literacy level impacts you for your entire life. Um, at the very beginning, in the first three years, if you haven't had those sort of pre-literacy skills built up, um, you know, it changes how you approach the rest of your education in school. And of course, you know, somebody who doesn't have strong literacy skills is, is, has a much tougher job and, you know, tougher approach in the job market. How much money are we as citizens spending on the library? Annually, we have a, about um, a total budget of about 13 million. That comes out to about $19 per citizen. And what are some other ways that the library is meeting the financial needs of the library? Um, we also have uh, the Friends Group, which they do several things for us. They take care of all the donated materials and they sell those. And five cents, dollar, four dollars at a time, they make about $150,000 a year that they provide to the library that pays for the summer reading program and most all of our other programs that we have. And recently, the Library Foundation was formed, and they um, go to corporations and private donors and make the big ask for things. So they were able to give $100,000 to help the, build the, the uh, children's room in the Central and Unser Library. And when uh, the North Valley Library had to be renovated after a fire, they raised about $17,000 to enhance that building. They added um, an adult reading space, a young adult space, and an early literacy center to that building. And you're getting ready to open another new library as well? Yes, the Central and Unser Library will have its grand opening on Saturday, April the 18th, starting at 10 o'clock. I would invite everybody to come and see what a modern library looks like. It's got lots of computers, lots of space for power. It's a separate children's room, separate area for young adults, the first one that we've had, so they can play Wii games, they can listen to music, and they won't bother anybody else. And we have our first Friedman Reading Room, which is in recognition of a very generous bequest that we got from Richard Friedman to purchase materials for the public and to build reading rooms. What I want to end with for both of you is, what do you think needs to happen to make sure that the libraries throughout the state, and especially the Albuquerque Bernalillo County libraries, can not only survive but thrive going into the future? Well, we need to keep current as we are. We have, you know, by adding the digital materials, by making sure we've got strong Wi-Fi and lots of good space for people to come in and feel like they're part of the community, whether they're there to be with a group or whether they just want to be by themselves, but in an area where there are other people. Um, you know, and we've constantly done that change, and, and we have over two million people come through our doors every year. You know, that's more than go to the biopark, that's more than attend sports activities in Albuquerque. So, you know, people want us, they use us, and it's, it's a great place to be. What do you think, Deborah? Well, I think if people just want to know what we're doing, they just need to come in and see what we're all about. Um, we are not just a place to warehouse books. We are connections being made between people, whether they're small children, whether they're teens, whether they're adults, whether they're seniors, it doesn't matter. We've got something for everyone and we are a welcoming space and you know, no matter no matter a background, language, uh, family orientation, it doesn't matter. We welcome everybody and we encourage everyone to come in. We'll put links to the libraries up on our website. Thank you both for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you.